first of all, I have to uh, say good morning to uh, God organizing team and all participants. And I also have about 30 slides uh, full of pictures, not much text. So I need to read from my script uh, so it could uh, process smoothly. Uh, so my presentation today is a message uh, to young researchers in a new era of climate change. I to say for myself how to work until my retirement in the next 20 years, which looking to today, uh, I will expand it into 30 years. Uh, I have my study background in Japan for 10 years in uh, Kobe University. And after that, I have also continued my collaboration research with my Japan colleagues. So most of, most of the method or approach I used to apply in Thailand uh, based on Japan know-how. And it's very typical field survey to squeeze out uh, any crew to understand the field. Today I will show you So today I will show you some of my work uh, in the Delta, the Chao Praya Delta of Thailand, focusing on my witness and point of research, 30 years of research. Uh, after 30 years of field research, I found that why I got a big pile of knowledge myself about Delta, which I have shared those to my students and to my academic colleagues. <coughs> On the other hand, not much change in a good way happened to my study site. And the big criticism was I got from one of my study area. So you came to our town, do site survey research, do design proposal things. We appreciate that. But what our team did is mainly for your promotion, for your KPI. That was stunned me a lot. So uh, do I forgot something along the way of my research? I got knowledge. I got promotion my university got KPI, but exactly that I led to the people on the study site. A lot of precious things, including indigenous knowledge from their ancestors, from a regional scale to household scale. Unfortunately, but the truth is, except a memory, I think I have left nothing for them. So I just slow down uh, my research activity and try to find out the missing piece. It came out to this presentation. My presentation has three parts, also three parts. Uh, one is my research pain point, two, a brief explanation of my works, and three, how to analyze it and my next move. Okay. In 1970s, many great professors from abroad came to Southeast Asia, started the era of peer field research. Professor Takayan Shikazu from Japan started the great research on the Delta. And this became our Bible for anyone trying to understand the Delta. And from 1980s, some of our Thai great teachers who came back from studying abroad also launched many theoretical academic findings. <laughs> it's an era of peer field research. I also have got a lot of basic know-how from Professor Takaya. My finding about Osha system has to say, without him, it could not happen. My finding of this part is about how Osha system in Bangkok happened 600 years ago and so on. But again, this pure field research just enlightened me to fulfill, to fulfill my eagerness. Then, the beginning of global warming 
heritage started in 1990s to uh, 2000s, many players in the world face numerous disasters, including flood, which used to be just a natural phenomenon. Meanwhile, I try to say something out about an impact from landfilling, mostly in urban area, and trying to figure out its mechanism. It's also the beginning of applied research era. You have to speak something out clearly what you are finding could contribute to proper warming solution. I had to connect my finding of delta morphology to it. So I proposed the balance of water and land in the ocean system from pre to post urban landfilling period. And I urged that urban area in the delta would be in danger without new culture nature concerning that balance of water and land. In 1910s, I have expanded my research field from the western part of Delta to Ayutthaya, which here Ayutthaya also got an impact not only from climate change, but from improper life cultivation planning. It caused an abnormal flood from seasonal to meters high of flood before the year of 2000s. It changed to 4 meters high flood in this field study area. I focus, I focus more on living unit called relating with sediment. The first stage was to clarify the morphology of sediment for me. We could explain how the level of flood height changed from pre to post modern agriculture and irrigation in 1950s, and also from pre to post climate change era. All together with the expansion of land infrastructure which cross over waterway networks that could cause abnormal flood in some area of some soil, but never affect to some area. We try to originate the very local method for village mapping, uh, which could complete half square kilometers of village map including 10 cm contour line using just 20 men in two weeks. And by overlaying house map, which provide a height of lifted floor level, we could forecast the house, which would be affected by the historical flood disaster. I tried to explain this to the head of village, but got that not much interest. After clarification of morphology and realized that many more houses would get affected from uh, 2010 uh, flood and the future flood too, fortunately, this is not only our concern, but we found that local people also concerned and trying to survive from the situation. It led to my study on checkup of live out the pillar house service in the region. By shifting the support, scaffolding, cut off the column, then lift up the house by scaffolding and replace the new column, house owner could have a new pillar house two or three meters higher than the old one. After 2011 of the biggest flood disaster in Thailand, some proposed solution for floating house drug me to this bamboo and EPS floating house. We did a lot of research on traditional floating house, which could trace back to 500 years ago, and we tried a new idea with low-cost affordable materials. Well, bamboo things, yeah. Somehow, from my viewpoint, I don't think floating house is the answer, but lift up house is. If any individual owner have time to do this lift up house, they need to pay 5,000 US dollars to the contractor, which half of the cost is that support scaffolding. I told the head of village, there might be more than 1 million households which need this lift up system to survive the extreme flood disaster. By village invest on the scaffoldings and have the contractors as consultant and gathering villagers helping each household during a lift up process, we could drop the payment from 5,000 
US dollar to 2,000 US dollar. But again, not much reaction or interest from the head of village. So I began to recognize something. I did work this in this area for years, but got that very little reaction from villagers. So I changed my strategy, a kind of another uh, Japan approach. Let's have fun. For years I approached my hardware, why wouldn't I try software things? I, find, I found out that this village used to have a special water ceremony, started more than a century ago, carrying Buddha statue on the walls from their village to a village nearby, but after World Network's development, decades ago they changed the way of carrying Buddha statue from on board to on top. So in 2012, I proposed this to the head of village. Let's reorganize the water ceremony. Surprisingly, the head of village agreed immediately. Many elders and young ones showed their will to repair their boards and join the ceremony. We helped plan and design something. This came out to be very successful, but unfortunately, I had to leave here after new assignment from the from the university that I have to do the other village uh, revitalizing projects in the Western uh, National Park and old town preservation project in the northern part of Thailand. That led to my separation from the Delta for a while. And I have learned that this water, somehow I have learned that this water ceremony could not continue in the next year due to many problems. But I think this water ceremony project gave me a lot of hints about soft power. Time five. Uh, after my assignment at the northern and western part of Thailand village, uh, I had a chance to come back to India in, 1990, uh, in 2019. This time with my Japan colleagues. She is a professor at Kunma University. Her academic background is an architecture, but she teaches at the Faculty of Education. She showed me her workshop on how to inherit the history of France in a village of Kunma through storytelling and making a production of picture books and drums and games. This workshop combined three stakeholders, university team, village elders, and primary school students. The process and production have stunned me a lot. I love this approach. And I asked her to let's do experiment in Ayutthaya. So we discussed an rearranged workshop in Southeast Asian style uh, based on the educational standard, it's too difficult to manage discussion by children and elders themselves for any conclusion for the next step uh, of art production. So we chose to give a lecture, a lecture from years of my field survey in the India, then make group of students to discuss and make an easy color drawing workshop under the supervision of my student, uh, university students. After that, at the university, we framed up the, the art scheme, we re-edited and made a production of a set of village cultural charm, uh, showing the place, ceremony, uh, animal, uh, food, uh, how they uh, do their living during the flood, and we also prepared to re-edit and make a production of picture books. Unfortunately, again, before we were ready to go back to the school in India, pandemic has taken place. Uh, at the same period, I got another assignment, smart building things. So, I try to uh, wrap up this. Uh, for what happened in the past and how should I move on to the era of new climate change research. I did a lot sketch during my uh, design project jury. And I think that hand freehand sketch is better than uh, change it into the PowerPoint rigid rhyme. So it can also be this. Uh, stop and uh, start from pure field research. Yeah. Getting reference information and some individual field survey without direct interaction 
with anyone in the field site, I could form assumption in the original scale. Then, with some pressure from the requirement for social impact contribution, I could propose some high level of thought. So cool, so clever. I could make a conclusion for the next project funding and share this to the symposium. Perfect KPI for myself and for university. But nothing could be consumed and taken back by local people. Even though I had tried to integrate most of field project into my class, working with the Japan colleagues, including working with some village representatives, head of village or elders, uh, and one way meeting after some conclusion from the workshop could lead to prior finding for sharper proposal at the symposium of false corpus papers, but nothing left to the village. Not even because too difficult contents they are in academic world, but also because those villagers getting involved also didn't understand the main objectives of all of this activity. I think the village front mapping is good, but would not welcome my head of village with some many political reasons or maybe because of my insufficient push through the level of proper government authority line, as well as live up house project. It's also a good project from my viewpoint. In 10 years, we could live up more than 100,000 pillar houses, 100 times faster than conventional way. But it's just an, uh, just an idea and never been implemented. And now I find out I found out the way to avoid hard political things during my research. The new approach by the soft power. At the first level of this approach, gathering the village children to share mostly of the hidden indigenous knowledge of their own cultural heritage through workshop, we could time the intimate involvement with them, and as the result, both researchers and villagers put together create the production which easily consume or absorb. The main goal is not academic KPI anymore, but the main goal is some production by villagers themselves for themselves. I think I am, I was an argument from both, from both previous soft power projects one, reconnecting the water ceremony, and two, and my art with children in the front village, which uh, could not, uh, we, when it was turning to be a good beginning for the sustainable steps, there will always be disaster or happenings on my way. But I won't give up. For the next assignment or mission, our faculty of architecture plan to push for four years from now, we have planned to enhance the cultural and environmental value of Western Delta settlement of Bangkok, which, from my viewpoint, is very rare in global level to find such a uh, case. A more than 10 kilometer continual waterfront settlement along the canal, which that canal used to be a big river, and is still maintained and most very large and same as the past, but also getting big threat from expanding conventional urbanized area. We have already started revising the accumulated knowledge and trying to integrate this to the curriculum. This time, we will plan in advance to do a better on-site study together with local people to clarify the sharing perception value and a better on-site workshop with local authority to clarify the local development plan which could be synergized with our network. And for sure, we will share the idea of our goal with them, so at the final stage, the result will be there to be continued by the local people themselves, no matter what happened to our research team. That's all my message from 30 years of research journey. Hope you enjoy, thank you.